All right. Here's an old Raspberry Pi 3, along with two old 860 and 850 Evo drives, SSDs from Samsung. Probably just as old as the Pi. And I decided to turn this into a backup station for an outside backup. So, I'm looking into this, which is my old cookie box. Uh, one of my old cookie boxes, and in here I have a um, 16 gig SD card which I used from, uh, for a Raspberry Pi Zero at some point. And obviously, 16 gigs isn't much, but it should be enough for Diet Pi to run on, to install on, and to set up sync thing along with maybe. One or two more Docker services like Jellyfin or Navidrone to, um, I don't know, stream my stuff over zero tier to my other clients. Anyhow, let's grab this one and check for the SD card adapter too. Inserted, going to the DiadPy website and looking for the image that's suitable for the Raspberry Pi model I have. In my case, it is the bottled Weeby Plus. And this can take a while, so. The um, DiadPy image is downloading. I'm going to modify this middle piece of. Uh, and model I found on Thingiverse for a Raspberry Pi case that holds, also holds two LSDs or hard drives, along with SATA adapters. But as I uh, have a Pi that's already inside a case and can be modified, I'm going to remove the standoffs here you can see on the side, and trying to make the middle piece a little thicker, so. These SATA adapters I'm using aren't blocking each other off. And yeah, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. I'll try to do so. And what you can see eventually here in the B-roll is the finished product. Obviously the um, middle piece is already inside the case and I've made it so the uh, bottom part is actually here the top part. It leads. It has a hole, an opening for the um, power charger connector, and it leads to the outside. And it's working wonderfully well for me. So yeah, that's what I did in the meantime. So here you can basically see me recreating this model, minus the end ops as mentioned, and making sure that the middle part is a little thicker than before. Also, I'm sure that the SSDs are still hitting fine. I made it a little easier in yellow, with the same dimensions as any regular SATA LSD. That's just here to ensure everything will fit well, and to give me the proper spacing between everything. Oh, and just for completion's sake, albeit I probably won't need it, I added a little hole in the middle, just so I can grab the SDs much easier. Eventually, I didn't really need it, but so, you know. Oh, after being done in Tinkercad and downloading the image from the DialPy website, I could continue on and writing the image to the SD card. 
What sort of Red Three was this? Rearrangement of the secret menu inside Raspberry Pi Imager that allows you to predetermine certain parameters for your image, such as the username and the password, which I have set here already. But eventually, those were undetected by DietPy, so I had to manually change it inside the operating system anyways. So, after some time of waiting for the SD card to be written, I can, again, type in the password and it's there. Let's pull the card out here. And stick it in the side of the Some network here. Go to the main. So, turn on the power and watch your magic happen. So, in all the software side of things, which is usually my favorite part of every project out there, albeit it takes the longest time, it's also the easiest setup my opinion and so I'm going here to a lot of things mainly trying to reapply the settings I previously attempted to do with Raspberry Pi Imager already but also installing other software packages such as Thinking and later on Aerotrip which I had to download from on the page. And as silly as I am, I had to reinstall Veracrip several times because there are several different packages for ARM and hard float and I had to figure out which one the Pi 3 B plus actually takes as well as manually installing some additional dependencies which however wasn't, wasn't much of an issue to me once it installed the main pick. After installing SyncPing, what I did was off-screen starting the program and closing it again so the default configuration is already set up and what you can see on screen right now is basically a little setting that I had to adjust so it's listening to the address 0000, 0, 0, 0 rather than localhost so I have the chance to access the web UI on that Raspberry processing thing from another machine that's also inside the zero t network. Afterwards, I went back to the user UI of Thinkbing, set up a password and a username, so not everyone is capable of changing settings, albeit Thinkbing on this little pie will be only accessible through zero t anyway. For the next step I created two directories into which I will mount the SDs I previously encrypted with Veracrypt. From here I actually took help of ChatGPT, letting it write a script for me that makes sure for the Raspberry Pi not to start the SyncPing servers before those two Veracrypt partitions are properly mounted. So everything that's handled by SyncPing is also properly executed in the process. At the end, I still set my script to auto start with the system at boot time, but make 
sure that Syncping really only runs if both my SSD are properly mounted. This is me actually trying to do this early on. I failed here a lot of times, but I fixed it off screen. It was already so late when I made the recordings. I didn't bother pressing record and so you have to live with the uh, fail footage. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this one of the script which X shortly after boot that both error conditions are indeed mounted and then mirrors the contents of one SSD to the other with only one drive with properly mounted nothing will happen. Otherwise it runs through. This happens once after system search, which is fine by me, as I usually turn off the backup battery anyways. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This was a fun project to do for one or two weeks. Printing the case wasn't too difficult either. You can see here I don't have a fan yet that's pushing out the hot air, but it shouldn't matter too much since the Raspberry Pi 3, even with those two SSDs inside, isn't getting too warm. It's getting slightly over 60 degrees here and there. But otherwise it stays relatively cool. And yes, I can complain. I have my upside backup that works. So, yes. If you watched this, thank you for doing so, and otherwise, I'll see you around.